let's talk a little bit about the smooth brush and smooth brush options before we dive deeper into the individual settings for Sculptures Pro. So you can see we can have Sculptures Pro turned on and we can go up here to the snake hook. And we've already covered this where if you pull out a snake hook, it'll get thinner and thinner. Uh, it'll tessellate on the fly. As you can see, as I pull this out, it's automatically updating this tessellation. Another fun brush to play with is BS. A, which is your spiral brush. So this will tessellate on the fly as well. If you hold down Alt, it'll spiral the other way. So you can use a combination of these to go ahead and spiral these things however you'd like. And it's also based on your brush size as well. So if we go ahead and undo all that, we can go ahead and do big spirals with a bigger size brush. Then as we decrease this brush size, and let's go ahead and hold down Alt so it spirals the other way, you're gonna see we're getting more detailed spirals as we continue to deform this geometry. And again, just continue making that brush size smaller, zoom in on your object, and you can continue to make these more and more detailed spirals. And again, hold down Alt to go ahead and switch that direction if you'd like. And if you turn off polyframe, you're gonna see these big spirals have very large polygons. And of course, as you make your brush size smaller, they get smaller and smaller. So that's another fun one to play with. If you hold down shift to smooth, you know that you can shift and smooth this until it's all the way completely gone. It'll go ahead and separate geometry as well as just completely delete geometry out of existence. If you have a big brush size, you can go ahead and just continue smoothing this down. Then you're going to see it's tessellating all of this down to a very, very large uh, chunks of geometry here. Now, if you hold down shift and you go up here to where it has Z add, if you change that Z intensity down to one, you can go ahead and smooth your object, but it's not going to average or change any of the positions of your vertices. It's only going to change the density of that geometry. So you can use this method. If you hold down shift and change your Z intensity, uh, you know, and you don't have to turn it all the way down to zero, but you can, you can just turn it down to a very low number. But if I zoom in here and I make my brush size very small, let's say I want to add detail to this area or I just want to change the density of the geom geometry in this area for any reason, I can hold down shift and just run my brush over it and it'll go ahead and on the fly increase the geometry in just this area. And again, because my Z intensity is very low and I hold down shift with the smooth brush, it's not changing anything. So again, if I go down here to say where we have a little bit more details, say in this eyeball, and we hold down shift and just use this, you can see we can change the density, let's make it even smaller. So you can just add more and more density here. And if we turn off polyframe, no details are getting smoothed or changed as it, you know, if we change this uh, Z intensity up, now it'll start averaging these vertices out and smoothing them. If we turn the Z intensity, oops, hold on shift, turn that Z intensity down to zero. It'll change the resolution of the geometry, but it's not going to move those verts at all. So if you want two versions of the smooth brush, say one smooth brush with the Z intensity at 100, so you can actually smooth objects out, and then one smooth brush with the Z intensity at zero, so you can just change the resolution of your geometry without smoothing out the geo. What you can do is you can hold down shift with your smooth brush, change your Z intensity down to zero, and then again, keep holding down shift, go here to brush, save as, and if you save this into your uh, C and a Windows machine, C program files, Pixelogic, ZBrush 2018, Z startup, brush presets. If you save it in here, whenever you start up ZBrush, you're always going to have that smooth brush available to you. For example, you're going to see I have this move Accu brush, which is basically if I go into my move brush, and I'm going to double click this divider over here so we can open that up and then take our brush menu, grab this little white dot and drag it to the left, and then open up curve. You're going to see with my move brush selected, Accu curve is turned off. I have a hotkey to that move Accu brush that's in that folder. So every time I start up ZBrush, I have this move Accu brush. I can assign a hotkey to it. And that just basically turns this Accu curve on so that I can pull out the points if I want to. So that's, what's like, that's what I use on the corner of the mouth here. I can just pull that to different, to uh, sharp points. So I can have a move brush and then a move Accu brush two separate brushes in here with two separate hotkeys assigned that I can use. Same thing with that smooth brush. You can have one regular smooth brush and then you can save this smooth brush out with a Z intensity at zero, load it up every time you use ZBrush and then you can switch between those as needed. Alternatively, if you don't want to restart ZBrush to have both of those brushes, what you can do is you can hold down shift. Let's go ahead and make the Z intensity back up to 100. And with that smooth brush selected, let's hit clone. And now if you go back into your brushes, you're going to see there's a smooth one brush. You can select that one and it'll say, okay, this brush will be used whenever you hold down shift, hit okay, and then change that, hold down shift, change that Z intensity to zero. And now smooth one is the one that will change the resolution of your object without smoothing it. And then if we hold down shift, 
and choose the original smooth brush, this one will smooth and tessellate at the same time. And again, if you want to save out this, this one with the low Z intensity, just select it, hold down shift, go to brush, save as, and then save it in this folder right here. Always remember, if you hit your comma key, go into your brushes, go into smooth here, there's a smooth stronger brush. The smooth stronger brush is the same thing as a smooth brush. If you hold down shift and then go down to the smooth brush modifiers, you're going to see that the weighted smooth mode has been changed to one, which is stronger. It's still going to tessellate and smooth your object all at once. It's just going to have a stronger smooth effect. So again, you could clone off your smooth brush, change that weighted smooth mode to one, or load it in from your light box here by hitting comma key and going to the smooth brush. And you can save it in that Z startup folder so that you always have that available to you as well. Another thing you can do, if we go back up here to where our horns were, and we grab our snake hook brush, for you guys it'll be the B key, S, and then H. You can, again, you can pull out any number of snake hooks that you'd like, and you're going to see it kind of tapers toward the end. If you want to thicken those up, what you can do is you can hold down Shift to Smooth, and let's go ahead and switch back to our regular smooth brush here. So we're going to hold down Shift to Smooth, and as we click on our mesh, and then we let go of Shift, it's actually going to do an inflate. So instead of switching over to the inflate brush and inflating this out, you can simply hold down Shift, start smoothing, and then let go of Shift, and that'll turn it into an inflate brush.